All right, welcome to Dart University. This is Engine Building 101. Now today, it's the moment of truth. It's piston to valve clearance. So this is whether you've got all your calculations right, you've got the component match right, you've got your clearances correct. So we're going to show you the clay method. It's really simple, just modeling clay. Nothing technical. Your kids probably got some. Just grab a little piece. Don't tell them. Come over here, clean the piston off. That'll make sure when you put the clay down, it sticks nice and tight. And we can come over here to the head side and take a little bit of oil and just kind of, you know, wipe down the valves a little bit. That's slippery. So when we push that valve down, it'll make an impression. And then when they lift back up, we're good to go. The clay will stick right down on top of that piston. So we've got our gasket down. Lay our head on carefully. Run your head bolts down. You're going to press that gasket. So now you got the right stack up and the right clearances. I'm just going to run one down here for Mako. Okay, now I'm going to set up on my valve train. So I'm going to back down here on my base circle. And I'm going to set all my push rods in and my rocker arms. Now I've got a hydraulic cam in here, hydraulic roller, but what I gotta do is put a solid in so I don't have any squish in my, my lash adjuster or my, my roller here. Everything's gonna be tight and I'm gonna set it to zero lash. That's important. So, you know, mechanical or solid, you're gonna have lash in there. We're gonna set everything to zero. Get everything locked in here. And now I've got a complete connection all the way from my cam lobe, all the way through my push rods, rocker arms, right down in my valve. So the motion of that cam is going to be transferred right into that valve motion. So I've got zero. Let's make sure everything's just nice, nice and tight. Now I can go through, you know, a complete revolution of everything. So I've got this guy going down. He's going to make an impression. Come back up. I got this guy going down. Coming back up. Now I can pull everything apart. Lift the head off and see what we've got as far as impression of the clay. Take some measurements. So we'll just get all this stripped off. And you'll notice we've got checker springs. These are pretty lightweight. This makes the engine easy to turn over, but no problem using your stock springs. You know, it just takes a little bit more effort to get the engine to spin over. Get this one head bolt out. Pull this guy off and see what we got. Great. So we've got our indentions here. So we've got our two valves. And obviously, you know, you can see where this cam was a little too big, we might be hitting. So what we're going to try to do is get about 65 thou minimum on the intake and about 125 on the exhaust. That'll make for a good street engine. Now to complete the CSI here, you know, I can slice right through carefully. And I can peel this away. And you can see right there on the side there, you know, I can start coming in here with my calipers and, you know, I can kind of measure what I've got for the clearance there and just make sure that I'm good. I got plenty here. So you've got the two faces. The valve comes down and you've got the pocket face, but you've also got radio clearance around the outside edge. So that's something you really want to pay attention to. And that's what the clay is going to let you do. And here's a perfect example. This valve was actually broaching the side here on the clearance. So it might have had plenty of face clearance, but it didn't have radial. So you can see after a few runs, this valve came apart, really tore up that engine. All right, we showed you the clay method. It works great. Now another method is a dial indicator. So if you're cutting your clay and you realize, man, you're pretty tight and you want a more precise measurement, this is a good way to do it. Now what we've done is we've cleaned the clay off. We've kind of mocked everything back up. We've got a dial indicator right here on the spring retainer. Now, you think about piston to valve clearance. It's not at max valve lift. At max valve lift, my piston is usually way far away. Now, the two tightest areas are typically intake valve opening. So I'm trying to get that valve open on my intake stroke as quickly as possible to start pulling that charge in. So my valve is actually chasing the piston down. The piston will fall right away from it, but that area right there, just after TDC, where you're close on intake, but exhaust is the other way around. I've got my exhaust valve open and I'm pushing the gas out and I want to leave it open. So my piston's actually chasing the exhaust valve close. So those are the two areas. So I backed up a little bit and you can see the piston is chasing up my exhaust valve as it's closing. 
So typically, you know, 15 to 5 to 4 is where I want to start measuring on my exhaust. If I keep going, you start to see the intake drop before I even hit TDC. So it's actually starting to chase that piston before it ever comes over and back down again. So on the intake side, typically, you know, 5 to 15 after is where I'm going to have minimum clearance. So I might start real early. I've got everything set. My lash is at zero. Again, I've got mechanical rollers in here, even though it's a hydraulic. And my cam is acting on that valve. So anything I do to overstroke this arm is my piston to valve clearance. So I can keep measuring it about every degree. I can bump that, measure it again, write down my numbers. Now I'm going to have a plot that shows me piston to valve clearance over crank angle. That's going to give me the most confidence of what I've got and where, because obviously if I retard or advance my cam, I'm going to move that clearance around. So it's a great method to walk through both sides and take an exhaust, get you the clearances, you know what you got.